Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to wrap up what we learned in chapter one by applying it to something unique. And that is, we're going to write some JavaScript to show our GPA in different ways. In this exercise, I'm going to give you an instruction. And when you click that instruction, you're going to see the solution to the instruction. The solution is going to be color coded in blue and red. The blue is HTML, the red is JavaScript. So if you read an instruction and you need a little help, just click the instruction and you'll see the solution. So the instruction for the first case is add the JavaScript to an HTML event attribute such as onClick. So here I have a button and I'm adding JavaScript to the onClick event attribute. And what does that JavaScript do? It's a basic document .get element by ID statement it gets the gpap HTML property, and here I've coded a paragraph with that ID, and sets it equal to my GPA is 4.0. So this statement creates this button, and the JavaScript then, when I click the button, changes the paragraph with the ID of gpap1, that's for GPA paragraph 1, from nothing one to whatever I've set it to equal to its inner HTML property. So there's quite a bit of JavaScript packed into this one statement. And it starts out by addressing the document object. We know the document object is the web page itself. It uses the get element by ID method, which is extremely common. It gets the element that is ID'd with GPAP1. It sets its inner HTML property to this text string. The other interesting thing about this JavaScript is that I must use apostrophes inside this JavaScript. I cannot use quotation marks because in the HTML the quotation marks surround the entire attribute value. So already we've got all of our HTML and JavaScript terminology intermixed. We're talking about HTML elements, the button element, and the paragraph element. We're also talking about HTML attributes. In this case, we're working with the onClick attribute. It's a special attribute. It's an event attribute. We're also working with the ID attribute. And when you ID an element in HTML with a value, that value has to match, including capitalization, when you call it in your JavaScript. When I refresh the page, all of the answers go away. So my recommendation is to read the instruction. And if you're having trouble writing the HTML or JavaScript, click the instruction, the solution will be provided. And in this case, I'm providing the solution that creates the button, and then the solution in the HTML that creates the paragraph. And then, of course, the final test is when you click your button, does the paragraph's inner HTML property change to what you have set it to? So this first example isn't doing anything too thrilling because we're simply pointing to a paragraph and changing its inner HTML property when a button is clicked. Yet it does demonstrate a lot of the Chapter 1 concepts, and it is fun to just start off with a basic example like this and make a paragraph say something else when a button is clicked. Our second example says to add the JavaScript to an HTML event attribute such as on click and use a variable or two. So when I click that, instruction to see the solution. It's exactly the same as the first one, except I'm setting two variables, GPA para for GPA paragraph, and then I'm grabbing the get element by ID that's ID'd GPAP2 for GPAP paragraph 2, this paragraph that says nothing to right now. I'm grabbing that and sticking it in GPA para. And then I'm setting the string equal to desired GPA. Finally, I'm using the inner HTML property of GPA para and setting it equal to whatever desired GPA is. By doing so, we're simply demonstrating that in this onClick event attribute, you can write one, two, three, as many JavaScript statements as you want. And this can all be on the same line, too. It's just incredibly hard to read if you do not put your JavaScript statements on individual lines, as I'm showing you here in my code. When they're on individual lines, it's easy to see that they all terminate with a semicolon. But of course, you know by now, being in my class, that we don't want to intermix our HTML and our JavaScript this way if we can help it. 
But in order to separate out our HTML and JavaScript, we're going to need to wrap that JavaScript with a function name, and that's in Chapter 2. So let me click my Calculate My GPA Number 2 button, make sure that this JavaScript that I've demonstrated is working, and it is, and that's what I would like to see you try to complete on your own as well. So our Chapter 1 conclusions are why would you use inline JavaScript, as it's called, versus embedded JavaScript which is in the script tags versus an external JavaScript file? The answer to that is we always want to use the external JavaScript file. It's easier to maintain and it's then capable of being reused. However, if your JavaScript is only going to be used on a single page, then it's absolutely fine to put your JavaScript in embedded script tags. This inline JavaScript is sort of a no-no for the same reasons that inline styles are a no-no. They're very hard to maintain. We're mixing our languages, so they're hard to validate. They're harder for the text editor to color code for you when it's all mixed together. Uh, but sometimes if you know that JavaScript is only going to be used in that one single element, then it is still obviously allowed and works. In our class, we're going to try and pull all of our JavaScript out into an external JavaScript file for maintainability and reusability. Some other things that I'd like you to be thinking about are where JavaScript can be placed in an HTML file. And a hint is that there are four places, and you saw that in your exercises in Chapter 1. It can be placed in the head section. We need, for example, the modernizer JavaScript file to be placed in the head section because that JavaScript helps us handle HTML5 tags in a web page when we're working in an older browser. So we actually need to load that modernizer library before we read the rest of the HTML page. The second place JavaScript could be placed in an HTML file is in line, in the opening element tag, as we see in examples 1 and 2. The third place it could be placed is in a script tags that are somewhere in the body. And often we have our script tags at the very end of the body, right before the closing body tag, because oftentimes we don't need that JavaScript until after the page has loaded. And the fourth place then would be in an external file. And again, we call that external JS file using our script tags and our SRC attribute. And it's often placed at the end of the web page right before the closing body tag, because typically we do not call external JavaScript until the web page loads. Thank you.